Dr. Seuss is one of the most beloved authors of children's books during the 20th century, but he should also be known as one of the greatest philosophical thinkers of the 20th century, too, because he had a very profound sense of human nature. Let's take one of his books called On Beyond Zebra, for example. In this book, there are two boys, one whose name is Conrad Cornelius O'Donnell O'Dell, and the other boy isn't named, but he is the narrator of the story. And in the book, they are learning the alphabet, and Conrad writes the alphabet up on the chalkboard from A to Z. And when he does this, he's very proud of himself. He says this, So now I know everything anyone knows from beginning to end, from the start to the close, because Z is as far as the alphabet goes. And here you get the sense that Conrad just feels like he knows everything that there is to know about the world. And there is this phrase that we have, knowledge is power, and power is a good thing, and knowledge is a good thing. But oftentimes when we think that we know the fullness of truth, when we have this power that comes with knowledge, it brings us into a rivalry with others who think that they also have this power, but sometimes we don't agree. And so this can lead us into a conflict, into a rivalry with one another for what we think is the truth. And what Dr. Seuss is doing here is telling us to take a step back from these conflicts that we have over truth, whether it's political truth, religious truth, whatever other kind of truth there is out there that we might fight over, take a step back and see the bigger picture. And that's what the narrator does here. And he says, there is so much more to this world than the ABCs that we construct. Look beyond Z. What does this have to do with the gospel? Well, in Mark chapter 9, Jesus takes three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up a mountain. And Peter, James, and John have this experience where they see Jesus on top of this mountain and he's transformed, he's transfigured into white, whiter than any bleach could make anyone. He is gleaming white. And next to Jesus stand Moses and Elijah, the law giver and the greatest prophet in Israel's history. And they, they see this and Peter says to Jesus, man, it would be great if we could build a dwelling for the three of you. And what Peter's trying to do here is contain this truth. Peter and James and John hear this voice from heaven that says, this is my son, listen to him. And after they hear this voice, uh, they walk down the mountain with Jesus and they ask Jesus, what's the deal with Elijah? And Jesus says, Elijah's mission was for the restoration of all things. This is the big picture that Jesus is giving his disciples, that beyond trying to contain this truth for us, when you take a step back and see beyond that tendency that humans have, you see that God is bringing the restoration of all things. One of the earliest Christians, a man named Paul, put it like this in his second letter to the Corinthians. He says, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So often we get caught up into the trap of Conrad and the trap of Peter, where we want to contain the truth for ourselves. But the truth, according to the gospel and according to Dr. Seuss, is so much bigger than what we can contain, than what we can grasp. And what Paul is saying and what Jesus is saying is the biggest truth is that God is bringing the world into reconciliation, humans into reconciliation with one another and into reconciliation with God and into reconciliation with the world. Our mission is to participate in the reconciliation of all things. So when we get caught up into these power struggles with one another, we're living in the old way. And Jesus is saying, participate with me in the reconciliation of all things. Mm -hmm.